so education is not the filling of a fire but the lighting of a fire says wbas so greetings all i am bishal patangia your coordinator for this session I am a postgraduate student specialized in human resource development management at the Department of Psychology, School of Social Sciences, Christ University, Bangalore, India. I extend a warm welcome to each one of you to this concluding webinar on the self-paced online certificate course on online merge offline OMO classroom well-being for learners and educators. So as we delve into the details, I would like to express our gratitude to UNESCO IITE for their funding in making this design uh, and development of this course. I uh, a heartfelt thanks to Reverend Father Dr. Joe C.C., the Vice Chancellor of Christ University and our university management team for their steady fast support and guidance in shaping this initiative. So before we unfold the highlight of this course allow me to introduce our instructors each bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to this learning journey first we have reverend father dr biju k chako who is a professor of media studies and the associate director of christ university yasunpur campus today father will be discussing about uh, cyber security and boundary buildings with us Next, we have we have with us Dr. Satyashilan Balasundaram, uh, who is an associate professor in the human resource management area at the School of Business and Management. Dr. Balasundaram will be discussing about constructive feedback and will talk about its importance. Lastly, we have Dr. Anuradha Satyashilan, who is a professor in the Department of Psychology at School of Social Sciences, Christ University, Bangalore. Dr. Anuradha Satyashilan will be conducting a guided meditation followed by reflection and discussion. Uh, so our webinar today aims for important takeaway discussion from the course and further understand the course experiences of the participant. The discussion will span approximately 30 minutes uh, followed by a dedicated time of 15 minutes for questions and answers. So without further ado, let me invite Reverend Father Dr. Biju K. Chako to commence the discussion on cybersecurity and boundary building. So good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, so, uh, so I'll be discussing on the cybersecurity and uh, digital boundaries, uh, which are very uh, critically important in today's interconnected and uh, the digital world for various reasons. So we'll be discussing uh, uh, maybe a few examples or a few things. Uh, maybe we'll go to the next slide, then we can see uh, the, uh, yeah, like a, a privacy settings, email, uh, phishing. Uh, we'll discuss on that. So first is on the privacy setting is all about you know, uh, uh, the, the control and options that are available to the uh, individuals to manage and protect their personal information. Um, especially when they are in online. So these, uh, this is essential uh, for maintaining, especially like uh, you know, maintain your, your privacy, then uh, uh, limiting the data exposure or maybe controlling who can access your information and so on. So we'll take some of the examples, uh, uh, especially in the, the online uh, scenario. Uh, we'll take the example from a, a social media platforms. Uh, Platforms like uh, Facebook or Instagram, if you check it. So yeah, they, there's there's a uh, provision for the profile pr privacy, you know, where you can choose uh, who can see your post or who can be uh, as a friends, or you have the uh, you can decide uh, what kind of personal information that you want uh, be there on the uh, personal uh, uh, privacy. Then the location services available, uh, which you can control whether the platform or service provider uh, can access your device location. Um, moving to another uh, platform, uh, which is like a search engine, for example, Google or uh, something. So where you, uh, a lot of the, uh, you, know, it, uh, you can manage the, your, your uh, search history or uh, location history or voice recordings. Everything is get get uh, you know, recorded in a Google uh, platform, so we can uh, manage all those. 
then uh, you, when you're using a web browsers, uh, like uh, example, like Chrome, Firefox, uh, Firefox or something. So a lot of cookies or site data like that you come across. So you can configure the, uh, or can block or delete the cookies and other tracking data that, that are uh, uh, automatically registered on web browsers. Um, when you use uh, smartphones or mobile uh, applications, so uh, which uh, we need to know like uh, you know, which are the applications which, which ask for camera, location, contacts, uh, such things. So you, you have to decide whether you need to enable or disable uh, or permit or not permit uh, to use uh, you know, all those things. And location service already mentioned, especially in a mobile uh, uh, smartphone and mobile applications. So you can uh, set everything um, then, um, uh, something connected with uh, the banking or online banking or financial services. So uh, we need to be secure the the you know the private uh, manage the privacy settings like uh, using uh, alerts or maybe enabling the two factor authentication uh, where you uh, uh, use your password. Along with that, you get a, a, a another message or SMS or something to your uh, mobile, so that's a two-factor authentication. So that way we can manage then, uh, if you're using a, a cloud storage service like uh, Google Drive uh, or Dropbox, such thing, uh, 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 facilities, then um, you should know who can access or who can view, who can edit your files and folders. So that is very important. Otherwise you get, uh, an, uh, I mean, uh, uh, your, uh, files or data get uh, changed uh, if somebody is accessing. So it is important to know uh, that and, and we need to keep in mind the privacy setting uh, may change over time as platform update their policies and features. So it's keep changing. So we need to know like uh, very exactly. So it is a good practice uh, regularly review the terms and service of service and uh, privacy policies of uh, the platforms and services uh, that we are using. Then uh, moving to the email uh, phishing. Uh, so email phishing is like a, it's a, it's a, um, a fraudulent attempt by the cyber criminals to track individuals and get into the revealing sensitive information like uh, your username, password, or credit card numbers, or other personal information. Uh, Generally, it is, it's done uh, through uh, uh, email communication. So I just give a few examples, like you know, how uh, the how the email phishing works. So one is like a deceptive email. It appears like uh, something official, you know, so some official email, uh, something from the bank or social media platform or government agencies. So we need to be extremely careful. So from where it, it uh, you now the authenticity of the the email. Or sometimes it appears like very urgent, you know? uh, and uh, so like a alarming message or something. So don't take, uh, don't respond uh, immediately. Uh, take, don't take any action to that. Then um, another one is uh, uh, you get links or attachments. So if you click on those links, uh, it will take to uh, fake websites. It may steal your information, or if you download those attachments, it can affect your, your devices with uh, malware. Then sometimes, like uh, uh, other one is uh, uh, spoof emails. Uh, emails, uh, it looks like uh, an official uh, email, uh, but there'll be some uh, uh, mistakes in that. You know, they change the uh, you know, uh, spellings or something. So these are the ways uh, we, you know, the, uh, the phishing works. So what we can do with this? So one is like a verify the sender who has sent it. Uh, if it's the official email or official uh, uh, no, uh, uh, name or something, then um, uh, avoid uh, uh, downloading if the attachment if something's unknown. So just leave it. Um, then uh, look at the uh, spelling and grammar. So if the uh, email contains like uh, typos and grammatical mistakes, that means it's not uh, no. Uh, um, original or, or you know, authenticated like uh, uh, email. Then um, uh, I'll mention like uh, the the urgency. Avoid the the uh, urgency. Like right. 
Um, other one is uh, the keep the software is updated, your operating system, antivirus, uh, then uh, the web browsers. You know, so we need to keep updating. So that's another uh, way we can uh, be away from all these uh, uh, issues. Um, then you can use a, a email filter if you're getting a, a spam, I mean, uh, this kind of emails, you can put in the spam. So you can uh, DV, uh, divert into the spam. Uh, that way we can uh, 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 you know, say from the email phishing. Then moving to the next uh, digital submission platform. So uh, so you need to know like where, what kind of uh, content you're updating. Maybe your photograph, your document, no, you should know. And uh, you should keep a, a strong uh, you know, passwords when you, when you put everything in the online. Um, then moving to the, uh, the, the fourth point, uh, the backups. So it's very important uh, to keep a, a copy with us. So always create a copy if something's important. You know? um, yeah, and you need to keep separately. So there are different ways we can do. Like one is like a, uh, you can uh, uh, copy into a hard drive, external hard drive, something. So th there are chances of uh, you know, uh, maybe the hardware, your yeah, system can be failed or you know, accidentally you may delete or maybe the malware or something. So different ways we can lose the data. So always like uh, uh, identify the, the, you know, uh, the importance of the data, uh, your document, your photograph, videos, database, everything, and uh, you need to uh, take a backup. So you can, as I mentioned, you can use uh, the uh, hard drive or you can put in the uh, NAS devices, network attached de uh, storages or cloud storage services and all that. Um, so you can uh, uh, keep the backup, uh, f uh, full data you can uh, uh, keep as a backup or maybe uh, whatever you update can be, uh, you know, uh, like uh, put in the backup. So there are different ways we can do that. Uh, usually on, a, if you're working on uh, uh, softwares, so softwares has a, a scheduled automated backup. So uh, enable them uh, at what time, what frequency you want to uh, save uh, all this. And once in a while you need to test your backup, whether it's, uh, it's uh, existing or something happened to that. It's also our, uh, um, uh, responsibility. Uh, moving to the, the password strength. So we have access to, we create a lot of uh, or access to a uh, lot of uh, sites or uh, uh, services which uh, uh, ask us to register with uh, username, password, everything. So the password is uh, it's very uh, crucial. Um, so we need a strong passwords uh, uh, when we create any account, you know, maybe for devices, uh, everything. So one of method, one of the methods is a uh, length of the password. Use a uh, you know, longer uh, passwords, letters. So maybe twelve letters, um, or if you use uh, a, a complex words uh, like a, a mix, uppercase, upper le uh, letters, lowercase letters, numbers, special cat, you can mix all this together. So become complex. So. Uh, others will not be able to track uh, 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 your passwords. Then you can avoid uh, the uh, uh, words like uh, no, guessable words. For example, type password or ABC123 or 12345, uh, so the numbers, So or your names, birthday, something. So all, it's easily, uh, now this can track. No? Um, then uh, avoid... Uh, 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 for each uh, maybe accounts, you can create a different uh, passwords, not like the same passwords for everything. Then uh, uh, always uh, change and uh, uh, give uh, change the, the passwords regularly. So that's very important. Don't use the same passwords uh, 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 no, every time. Then, um, uh, and avoid writing down somewhere, maybe you may writing down on um, uh, a notebook, something. So avoid those things. Uh, now moving to the, the classroom guidelines, especially I, I want to talk on the online uh, 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 guidelines, um, where you don't have an option to 
clarify face to face like uh, in the in the real classroom you can ask your your teacher uh, or instructor what to do but here on online you need to uh, identify uh, what are the guidelines so clear and uh, have a clear uh, uh, understanding on the instructions and read them carefully and uh, try to follow them it's, it can be uh, about the codes or the modules or requirements maybe the time and uh, various schedulings it may be uh, on the expected uh, what is expected from the learners or it may be on evaluation uh, criteria what you uh, submit like projects assignments or something or maybe on uh, the submission methods like whether it's a written or a maybe audio or video or something in a uh, uh, some projects or something then uh, deadlines and so on so i'm moving to the uh, and the scheduling uh, tools uh, yeah uh, so uh, nowadays like we all work and spend a lot of time extensively on uh, electronic devices especially online so we need to learn and uh, we need to put into practice how much or how long uh, you know, we need to spend our time and, and energy like especially online so we need uh, uh, no, time for everything like in life, uh, whether uh, for learning, uh, job, uh, then uh, spending time with the family, doing physical exercises, spiritual exercises, socialization. We need travel, then entertainment, everything. So some are like a purely like a offline, some are online. So we need to have a, a clear idea on what is like online, what is offline. So whatever required, do it online. Otherwise, do it offline. Then. Uh, in connection with this, maybe the calendaring uh, is a uh, uh, good method. So weekly, daily, what are the tasks we need to do? So we have options like a Google Calendar or our own devices has uh, options like alerts. You can put the alerts then to remind us what is to do uh, now, later, or this week, today, and all. Like yeah, so this is uh, something on the uh, no, on the same uh, the topic. Now I'm inviting Dr. Uh, Satishilan to share his thoughts. Thank you, thank you, Father. So uh, I will talk a little bit on the constructive feedback. Uh, that is part of the course. So uh, what you're going to get is a bird's eye view or a kind of a, uh, even a snapshot of what, what the course contains. So which is what on the technology side or the digital side, Father was, uh, Father Biju was uh, talking about. I'm going to give an insight on how, uh, you know, uh, on the topic of constructive feedback, which is essential for uh, educators and learners uh, in terms of how to uh, move up the curve in terms of the learning. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Uh, yeah. So just, uh, no, uh, just take a quick look. I know maybe I'll give a, a 30 seconds for you to read through the statements. I'll read along with you uh, the statements. So let's say a teacher wants to give a feedback uh, to the student and the statement the feedback goes like this. And we are talking in the context of online classes. So the teacher says or wishes to say, your discussion forum posts lack substance and do not contribute to the conversation. This is probably what the message the teacher wants to convey. The next one is you do participate or you do not actually, it means you do not participate in online classes, class discussions. And even if you do, your contributions are superficial. The third one, you miss assignment deadlines and the quality of your work is not good. Now, just let's reflect that if this is the feedback that our teachers are going to give us, how does it make us feel? No, this are typical feedback that you know, we would like to give. This is what we actually want to convey. But how does it make us feel? Uh, as learners, you know, just for us to reflect what kind of words or what thoughts come to your mind. So I'm sure uh, all of you have reflected in the interest of time, we'll move to the next slide. So I'm sure one, the statement would give a sense of negative feeling, a sense of not feeling so good about this feedback that I'm getting. Two, it is not focusing on what I didn't do right. It is focusing on me as a person that I'm not good enough. Third, 
the statement is almost accusatory that I'm not participating, I'm not posting the right content. And also it gives an idea of being critical and judgmental, which is closing off a dialogue. Ideally, in a feedback context, we would want the student to have the opportunity to have an interaction, have a dialogue, you know, kind of learn. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an example of, of course, the teacher may not be wrong in what he or she wants to say. But if this is the language that is used, then instead of making the student wanting to improve it, and actually put off and give the student a very negative feel of what it is. So let's now see how the statement, this very same content can be restructured. Or, so let's look at what the revised statement of feedback would look like. So instead of telling the first statement, your discussion forum posts lack substance and do not contribute to the conversation, the teacher says, you need to work on improving your discussion forum posts. I would suggest that you try to think how you can build on the ideas of other students and add your own perspective. Also try to provide some examples and evidence to support your claims. Now reflect how this feedback, what feeling this feedback leaves with you. Look at the first one and look at the second one. The same content, we are telling again that the feedback forum post needs to be improved, but there's a sense of positivity. The person is not getting criticized. There is no accusation and it allows the student a little bit of dialogue to ask, how do I do that? What do I do? The same, you know, if you look at the other statesmen, you do participate in online online class discussions, and even if you do, your contributions are superficial. Actually, I meant you do not. The, the revised statement, you need to work on participating more activity, actively in our online class. This because we're not telling you not participating, we're telling you need to work more. I would encourage you to read the discussion prompts carefully and think about how you can respond in a meaningful way. So this is some uh, little bit of restructuring of the language to make the student feel a little bit more encouraged, a little bit more open. So that brings us to the context of what are the dimensions or features of constructive feedback. Now, if you really look at this language, what we know from this, we can draw out certain features of what a constructive feedback look like. One, it is respectful. Instead of accusing and being negative, it is respectful and positive. Two, it focuses on the work of the student, not on the student's personality or how the student is. It focuses on what was not done well, rather than the student is not good. Three, this feedback is very specific and actionable, telling the students need to take certain actions. Four, it also gives a language that is given to open to dialogue. And the fifth is very important, which is that any feedback should be timely. So to really summarize, what a constructive feedback looks like. It is respectful and positive, not accusatory or not in a negative tone. Two, it focuses on the work and not on the person. Three, the feedback is specific and actionable, what the student can do to improve his or her performance. Fourth, it allows the student to ask question, you know, clarify from the teacher. And five, it has to be timely so that the student gets time to act on the feedback. So this is on the features of constructive feedback. But why is it important? Why are we stressing on this constructive feedback so much in this course? Uh, this is just a highlight. I'm sure you'll find a lot more details in the course itself. This is just a snapshot of what. So one of course, you know, when there's a constructive feedback, it enhances the learning and the growth because the students feel positive about what you're telling. They want to learn more. It gives, up, gives them an opportunity to ask you more questions and want to learn, make, you know, wants to make them learn more. Two, it enhances the student's self-confidence. You know, instead of telling you're not good, we are telling, you need to improve, you know. So there is, the student is a positive, you know, sense of himself or herself when we say this one, there's enhanced self-confidence. And then, of course, you know, without saying it goes, that the relationship between the teacher and the student becomes better. All this really adds on to the well-being and engagement, which is the focus of this course. So in summary, there is a way to give a feedback. Negative feedback puts the person down, demotivates. A constructive feedback enhances learning and growth and enhances self-confidence. It improves relation, resulting in the well-being in the classroom and between the teacher 
and the learner. So this is what a simple smash, snapshot of the constructive feedback or the importance of constructive feedback. I now ask Dr. Anuradha to take over from that. Thank you, Dr. Satisilan. Um, so uh, I was going through uh, the participant list, a couple of you were there in the introduction uh, webinar, a couple of you are uh, new to this uh, course. Uh, so we would like to take you through a glance of the course, what it is and what happened um, 20, uh, two weeks back or three weeks back. So the course goes like this. There are nine modules we have. Um, starting from digital literacy to cybersecurity to physical wellness, emotional wellness, and also in terms of assessment, uh, constructive feedback. These are uh, some of the examples of the modules which we have put it down in this course. And each module is uh, linked to each objective that will take you through uh, kind of uh, nine learning outcomes for uh, the learners. Uh, as part of this, this course, we have also created a workbook which has uh, 150 pages of details of each of these modules, subtopics, as well as activities. Activities includes uh, fill in the blanks, match the following, as well as from some reflective uh, uh, activities. So at the end of each module, we have given uh, references for further reading, as well as few uh, open source videos as well as open source uh, uh, article for your uh, uh, enhancing uh, information. We have also given clarity about uh, uh, how the evaluation for this course will happen. Uh, there are uh, assessments as well as summative assessments. And uh, in the um, uh, in this particular slide, you could see the introduction webinar. We have uh, captured uh, one of the you know, the last uh, interactive uh, session, uh, this thing that we have included here. So this is about a snapshot about what is this particular course and how this course content are and what you would be uh, receiving if you click the website and uh, enroll yourself to the course. Having said that, I would like to take you to uh, my part of this discussion, Vishal. Okay. So uh, I have been uh, assigned the task of taking you through uh, meditation, a uh, guided meditation. Um, if you look at uh, the flow of this presentation, um, most of you would be remembering Abraham Maslow uh, is need hierarchy theory. Um, the way we have constructed the course as well as this webinar is also similar. So father has taken you through security. Once your uh, physiological need, everything is done, you need to go for security. Father has spoken that. And then um, uh, Satya Silan sir has spoken about confidence, self-esteem, and then uh, we are uh, reaching towards self-actualization. So that is where I am here. So we could uh, connect this particular webinar as well as our course to Maslow's need hierarchy theory. So how we will come to the conclusion in terms of actualizing everything. Um, uh, uh, see, basically, uh, when we look at uh, uh, meditation or meditative practices or self-actualization, when we have a, a release from stress or relax, a relaxation from stress, and when we are focusing ourselves inward as, as, well, as well as outward, when we are emotionally balancing ourselves or emotionally regulating ourselves, when we are aware of self, that is where I am again linking to Maslow, um, that gives a lot of physical wellness and well-being. So it improves sleep, it improves our physiological well-being, quality of our life, and also connects our body and mind. mind. That in turn connects ourselves with other human beings, whether it is our co-workers, colleagues, teachers, or our learners, students as well. Disha? So um, how we can do it, how we can achieve uh, the self-actualization state, one very important thing is looking towards uh, ourselves, looking inwards. That is where the guided 
appropriate meditation practices comes you could see several um, such strategies uh, mentioned in the uh, courses you you could see um, meditation videos also you can download and uh, use it while you are doing the meditation um along with that each of the module will also take you through each of the steps which which was prescribed in abraham maslow's need hierarchy theory so let us have a quick meditation uh, as i have mentioned several meditative uh, strategies are given in uh, in the modules 3 as well as in module 6 and 7 um now i am going to take you through a meditation practice called body scanning so i would recommend all of you to sit at the back of your chair keeping your uh, palms at uh, at your um, at your lap one on top of the other like this so that you can make a conical shape uh, you could see my hand here one on top of the other and uh, upward facing on your lap close your eyes i will reduce my volume but uh, you will be able to follow what i am um, telling you so that you can follow please close your eyes sit at the back of the chair your feet on the floor firmly you can get the blackness inside your eyes you may get fluorescent colors try to focus your attention to black 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 you can bring your attention to the soothing calm black take a deep breath slowly and steadily take a deep breath meantime your focus is on the blackness take a deep breath now put your attention on your eyes nose and your entire face try to remember this word in your mind i am calm my eyes my nose my entire face is relaxed take a deep breath with the hissing focus your attention on the blackness it is soothing calming and your eyes are relaxed your nose your face your mouth your teeth your brain is relaxed take a deep breath focus your attention on your neck chest and your abdomen visualize from the outside how's your neck how's your shoulders how's your chest your abdomen relax scan it if it is tensed relax it Take a deep breath with the hissing sound. And focus your attention on your inner organs. You are getting relaxed. You are taking care of them. Take a deep breath. Your neck. your chest your stomach inner organs vital organs are relaxing take a deep now focus your attention on your legs on your hip on your knee and on your feet toes take a deep breath with the hissing sound your hip is holding you perfectly 
and your knees are strong, your feet is relaxed, and all your nerve endings are relaxing. Scan it from outside and send positive waves to these organs. Take a deep breath. Now look at your focus on the blackness, soothing, calming back blackness. Try to thank yourself first. Thank your eyes, nose, your brain, your mouth, your teeth, your ears, which are hearing this. Say thank you. Take a deep breath. Convey your thanks to your neck, your spinal cord, your chest, your lung, your stomach, and other vital organs. Say thank you. Take a deep breath. Look at the blackness, soothing, calming blackness. You are relaxed. Your body is relaxing. You are focusing your attention on your body. You are scanning your body. You are now looking at your hip. You are saying thanks to your hip. Your thighs, your knees, your feet, and the toes. Take a deep breath. Convey your thanks to the nature. Convey your thanks to your parents. Take a deep breath. Convey your thanks your friends, your family, and also yourself. You are relaxed. You are in this present moment, enjoying this present moment. Take a deep breath. Say thank you to yourself. It is because of you, you are here, and you are doing well. You are in the path of self-actualizing yourself. Take a deep breath. Now slowly bring your palms together. Don't open your eyes. Rub your palms together. Place it on your face. And slowly massage your face. Your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, your cheek, upper jaw, lower jaw, back of your neck and your ears. Pull the ear view. Bring the palms together once again. Rub it vigorously. Place it on your face. Massage your eyes. Your eyebrows, your forehead, your cheek, your nose, upper jaw, lower jaw, back of your neck, your ears, pull your ear lobes. One more time, bring your palms together, place it on your face, you know what you do. Massage your eyes, massage your eyebrows, cheek, nose, upper jaw, lower jaw, back of your neck, your, pull your ear. Bring your palm to the same position how we have started on your lap. Take a deep breath. Look at the blackness inside your eyes. 
say thank you to each one of us who are here. Send your positive vibration to each one of us, to you. So slowly open your eyes. Slowly, slowly, slowly open your eyes. Thank you for participating in this guided meditation. I have incorporated body scanning as well as a gratitude meditation in this process. You can mix, you, you could find all these details in the workbook as well as in the videos. Bisha, over to you. Uh, I hope I'm audible. So we have embarked on a journey exploring the vision of uh, online and offline education. And I trust that the insight shared by our instructors have sparked reflections and ignite your curiosity. Reverend Father Dr. Biju K. Chako shed light on the crucial aspect of cybersecurity and building boundaries. Dr. Satyashilan Balasundaram provided insights into the art of constructive feedback and Dr. Anuradha Satyashilan guided us through a moment of reflection with the meditation session. Now I encourage all the participants to share your thoughts and experiences and your questions you have in mind about the session and the course. Uh, your input is important and we are eager to hear about your takeaway from the course and you have uh, which you have taken and also open to open question to also people who have uh, who have going who are going to start or um, like in the middle of the course as well so whether you have reflected on the course content inside gain or queries about the omo approach itself please feel free to type your thoughts in the chat box or um, unmute yourself to share your thoughts Um, can we share a view by unmuting ourselves, sir? Yeah, you can. You can share. Yes, sir. Like uh, when we practice meditating ourselves uh, alone at our home, it's much more difficult to go in that blank state. Like one or the other thought, uh, thought uh, passes in our mind, and then we break the flow state. But when uh, the ma'am was seated and she was telling, we were just focusing on uh, what she was saying. And we are just doing that. It was much easier for us to go in that blank state and meditate. That's my point of view. Thank you for that experience of meditation. Sir. Thank you. Um, that is why we have this meditation video also available in the website. You have to go to the module where you can download this video. Video for a guided meditation. 15 minutes video is there. You can use that. You can play it and you can um, I will be guiding you in that video. You can just follow my voice and you can do the meditation. Okay. Thank you. Tatiana has put the link here for uh, the uh, participant if you want to take it. Uh, Tatiana, would you like to uh, explain? Uh, would you like to? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I was just going to say that uh, the course that we've been talking about here is can be found on following the link that they have just shared in the chat, just in case you do not really know. So you can click on the link and you can follow and you will be able to find, well, first of all, of course, you have to register on the e-library platform and then you have to enroll into this course uh, on online merge offline well-being for learners and educators alike. And uh, I'm very grateful. I, let me take this moment. I'm very grateful to <laughs> to Reverend Father, to Anuradha, to Selan, to uh, Bishal for uh, for the great amount of work they have done uh, preparing the course. 
and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the course will be of great success. So I do encourage all of you who are here online to join, and I hope more people who are not here online at the moment will watch this webinar and will follow. And the course link will also be found under the um, video. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a great pleasure to, to be working with you. And uh, yes, the course is very, very rich in a lot of resources. So it's a heartfelt recommendation to take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, Satya Salam, would you like to say anything? Uh, just that, uh, no, the, yeah, I mean, for those who joined for the first time, just some insights that it's a 36 hours course. <clears throat> it has around five hours, 40 minutes of videos and plenty of reading material. Um, it's the course is designed in a way that school teachers can take it but even university professors if they want more in-depth insights on the science of well-being on the science of digital teaching uh, learning how to conduct classrooms how to do the assessments all of that is covered in great detail the whole host of reference material included in the course so we strongly encourage all of those who are enrolling to the course to use those resources, get strong insights uh, on the content. Father? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. It was a great uh, uh, time working with uh, the entire team, including the UNESCO. Um, yeah, uh, and this uh, through this course, I'm sure like it's not just a, a, a completing this course. This will help you to further you know, uh, if you're conducting any online or digital platform uh, program something uh, it's also a way to prepare your uh, students uh, you know, uh, prepare ourselves how to be in a, on platform um, digital platform and how to enhance the learning I think that's a great learning for me too thank you thank you father um, I would like to uh... Normally, before Bishal says his uh, thank you, I would like to thank uh, Tatiana. It was a great journey, Tatiana, six months gone by. Um, you know, it is like we just started. Uh, uh, father is nodding his head. That's okay, so it's so long. Uh, we four of us started with you six months back. It is a, a easy ride and each and every step you helped us. Uh, prepare these modules and you know, your uh, feedbacks were uh, very constructive and we have learned a lot from you as well as uh, from Chanel, uh, Ned Dragon from China, her inputs as well as her uh, you know, support in terms of bringing this uh, entire modules. Uh, we would like to thank our university father, vice chancellor, uh, Reverend Father Joe C.C. Constant support the moment we got this uh, a proposal from that moment uh, till uh, uh, today he has been with us he has been guiding us and the entire management all the fathers and uh, all of our uh, colleagues have uh, been supporting us and all of our students they were all like, even uh, today they all had online classes but most of them were uh, messaging i couldn't reply back to them ma'am i couldn't join i couldn't join like that most of them were uh, getting in you know, and almost um, uh, all others uh, you know, uh, somebody messaged now and somebody wrote to us in the OM of Wellness from uh, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan uh, after the first webinar. And all uh, For all of you, thank you for the encouragement and your interest in uh, um, you know, taking this course. Uh, thank you so much. And my team, uh, Reverend Father Biju, uh, uh, Sati Silan sir, and uh, Vishal, all their constant support. Without their support, it wouldn't have been possible. It's a, it's a nice team. I feel very sad that uh, it is getting over today, but uh, we should start one more proposal. Uh, Tatiana, if you permit us, then we could come with uh, one more proposal. So that is what I would like to... Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I it will be a great pleasure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we need to thank Anastasia, who's put that uh, in technique with a scientific, uh, scientific point of view exactly what I to do with this course yeah. uh, that uh, it's it's all presented from a science perspective you know, no uh, 
uh, this one. So thank you. Uh, yeah, plenty of messages coming from Louisa, Mark, and also I think yeah, I should thank um, Tatiana. Quite a few of many of our colleagues are there uh, in this call. Many of them joined. They've been asking for the link. We've been busy sending the link. So thanks to all my colleagues and the team at School Management for supporting and encouraging us in this journey. Thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, Tatiana. It's wonderful. I hope. People make use of this course. I think it's been done with a lot of depth and a lot of research, uh, with a lot of content. Hopefully, benefits all across the globe who is interested in uh, getting into this uh, OMO setup. And Father, you would like to add anything before Bishal says? Uh, yeah, uh, like it, yeah. Bishal, over to you. So as we draw the curtain of this webinar, I am honored to extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you. Your active participation has been a catalyst for a truly enriching uh, session. I would like to firstly thank Ms. Tatiana and her team from UNI you know, UNESCO, IIT, Russia, and Ms. Chanel Law of Nadragon, China for their constant support throughout the process of the course and till the final webinar. So I, again, I would like to thank our instructor, Reverend Father, Dr. Biju K. Chako, uh, Dr. Satishilan Balasandaram, and Dr. Anuradha Satishilan, who has shared uh, insight fostering our understanding of online merge, offline learning approach. So their expertise have given a lot of key aspects from cyber securities, uh, constructive feedbacks, to profound impact of mindful reflection. So in the word of our closing quote, our words, actions are, uh, and actions are building block of a thriving learning environment and how we deliver them can make all the difference. So this sentiment uh, captures the essence of our discussion today. Effective communication, uh, resilience and adaptability stands as the pillar of the environment and you know, conducive uh, to growth and learning. So as we navigate the dynamic landscape of education let us strike for forward this principle which is communication resilience and adaptability they are not just concepts uh, they are tools that empowers us to create dynamic and responsive learning environment once again thank you all and to all the participants for your active involvement our learning journey continues, fueled by communication, resilience, and adaptability. Wish you all the continuous success and growth in your educational endeavor. And I hope you guys enroll the course. And, and also, please do share your inputs or feedbacks or any queries you have through our email, omowellness at the rate .in. And here I am off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishal. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, Tatiana. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.